sometimes I like to play my wrench like a guitar here in the garage. Today we're going to be looking at ratios and what a scale factor and rate are. Come on into the garage and let's get down to work. Well, welcome back to Bobby's Garage where we are looking at... Well, reset. Well, welcome back to Bobby's Garage where we have any tool to get the job done if you're working on a car. And if you can't do it, you might as well get on out, right? And so today we are talking about lesson two ratios. And we're going to focus on today in our second playlist video for ratio playlist. And we're going to focus on in our second video in our ratio playlist, the rate and scale factor. So let's get on under the hood and look at what we're doing today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the rate and scale factor of a ratio and understand how to use them. So let's get our gears grinding and our minds in lock so we can learn today. Come on with me. So the first thing we want to do before we really dive in is understand some math vocabulary. So if you remember what we talked about when we popped the hood last lesson, we talked about what a ratio really was and the different ways to write them, right? And so we remember that a ratio is a multiplicative comparison between two quantities or quantities being numbers, right? So within a ratio, there is something called a rate and a scale factor. So let's get some definitions down before we really look at these to figure out what they are. And so our definition for the rate, the rate is a multiplicative change within a ratio. The key word for the rate is within, right? So that's inside of a ratio. We want to see the multiplicative change or relationship between the two numbers that make a ratio up. That might be a little confusing until we look at an example. So let's go on to a scale factor. A scale factor is a multiplicative change in the size from one ratio to another separate ratio, right? So the scale factor is going to be comparing two different ratios, whereas the rate is going to be comparing the same ratio. Now, if you're like me, you know, your, your mind might all be in tangles right now. Um, so let's go get a brush and kind of brush those tangles out and look at really an example that might explain this a little bit better than, uh, you know, uh, your, your car mechanic Bobby trying to talk. Because sometimes, I, you know, I don't know how to talk too good. So the first thing you might see is you might say, uh, uh, Bobby, I don't see a ratio here because you didn't tell me about this. Now, uh, this is a new way to write a ratio, right? And that is going to be with a ratio table. Um, and so really what this is saying is the same thing, 6. And then right here, right, this is kind of like writing as a fraction, 6, 2, 2, right? And then this one's saying 18, 2, 6. And so sometimes they don't just write it as a fraction, they actually put it into a ratio table. So this is an, uh, a nice little thing Bobby wanted to teach you today. Um, so story time from Bobby. So Bobby the car mechanic and his secretary, Lisa. Now he would be lost without his secretary. She does all the paperwork. Uh, and Bobby, he just likes to work on cars. Um, so Bobby the car mechanic and his secretary, Lisa, are each making a salad for lunch. Below is a ratio chart or table. Right. For the ingredients Lisa and Bobby used. Right. So L is for Lisa. So this is her um, salad ratio. Now you can see she really likes croutons because she has six croutons to every two almonds. Right. That's how we're going to read that. Right. And Bobby, Bobby's a little bit bigger. He needs some more food. <coughs> so uh, he doesn't have six croutons. He has 18. So Bobby's ratio from for croutons to almonds is 18. Right. Two, six. Now, these are our two ratios. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them over here so we can see how we saw them yesterday, right? We have six, two, uh, two. And then over here for Bobby, right, we had 18, two, six, okay? And so our first question is, what is the rate from croutons to almonds, right? And so I'm going to label this as croutons. I'm going to label this as almonds, right? So same thing here, croutons to almonds. Okay. Now remember, the rate is the relationship between the numbers that make up the ratio, right? And so we're going to be comparing, again, because it's all about relationship and comparing, the croutons to almonds in Lisa's salad right here. So the rate going from almonds to croutons, right? What's the difference? What's the multiplication difference here? And that is going to be times three, right? So the rate from almonds to croutons is going to be three, right? Or times three. Now it's the same thing for Bobby's salad too, right? Because six times three 
equals 18, right? And so our rate going from almonds to croutons is 3. The croutons are 3 times bigger than the almonds, okay? So that's a rate because I'm comparing the same ratio, okay? If we go back the other way, what we're going to do, our rate isn't going to be times 3 because now we want to know what is the rate from croutons to almonds. So if you look at this side screen over here, you remember something you learned about in fifth grade, which is dividing by a whole number is, is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So for instance, if I'm dividing by 10, that's the same thing as saying multiplying by 1 tenth. Okay, and I can prove it to you. If I do uh, 20 divided by 10, right, my answer is 2. If I do 20 times 1 tenth, I have to put it over 1, I get 20 over 10, which is still 2, right? And so it's important that when we do this, we know that we are multiplying by 3 when we went from almonds to croutons, but because ratios are multiplicative comparison, instead of saying dividing by 3 going back that way, we're going to say multiplying by 1 third, right? So 6 times 1 third would be 2. So the reason we're multiplying by the reciprocal, the one-third instead of dividing by three, is because ratios are multiplicative relationships. So we want to keep everything as multiplication when we can, right? So our, our rate going from croutons to almonds is going to be, right, multiplying by one-third, right? So just remember we're doing multiplication when we do that. So a rate is when you are comparing the same two numbers within the ratio. Now I'm gonna erase everything we have so we can talk about what a scale factor is. So if you remember yesterday, we talked about how we write the ratios in different ways for different purposes, right? And so for this one, I'm gonna write it as a fraction because I think it's a little bit easier to see here. So I still have six croutons. This is Lisa's, right? I still have six croutons to every two almonds. And for Bobby's, right, I still have 18 croutons for every six almonds, right? And so this is the same thing as what we just did when we wrote it like this. But just to show what a scale factor is, it's a little bit easier to visualize them as fractions. So I want to know the scale factor from Lisa's ratio to Bobby's ratio, right? So when we do a scale factor, we're comparing the quantities or the numbers between two separate ratios. When we did rate, it was within the same ratio, right? We compared the six and the two. When we do scale factor, we are comparing the two different ratios, right? So if I'm going from Lisa's ratio to Bobby's ratio, my scale is times three, right? If I'm going from Bobby's ratio to Lisa, oh, so I'd say times three, and that was a happy accident. As Bob Ross would say, there's no such thing as mistakes. It's just happy accidents, right? Thank you, Bob. Rest in peace. And so I learned how to paint when I was doing Bob. I didn't even need art class in school because I did Bob Ross, right? Um, and so when I'm going back, though, for the scale factor from Bobby's ratio to Lisa's ratio is one-third, right? Because I'm going to be multiplying six times one-third. Now, let's go back real quick to Lisa's and Bobby's ratio. If you notice, this kind of looks like something we did for fractions. Because if my scale factor between uh, Lisa and Bobby's ratio is times 3, that means my bottom or my denominator of what my fraction would be will also be times 3, right? So this is kind of like multiplying by my big 1, which is why I wrote it as a fraction. It's a little bit easier to see the scale factor when you are writing it like it looks like a fraction, right? And so whatever your scale factor is, it has to work for both your both numbers that make up your uh, ratio, both for your croutons and your almonds. So the scale factor when I compare Lisa's and Bobby's ratio is times three. Now, if I go backwards and I'm trying to do the scale factor from Bobby's ratio to Lisa's ratio, right? Again, I'm not going to be dividing by three, right? I'm going to be multiplying by one-third, right? Again, because ratios are multiplicative re so we, uh, relationships. So we want to multiply by the reciprocal instead of dividing by three, 
right? And so again, whatever you do to the bottom one, you also have to be able to do the top one, right? And so my scale factor is one third going from Bobby's ratio to Lisa's ratio. It's got to work for both of the numbers in the ratio, right? So Bobby did a lot of talking, but let's just recap before we get into the I do, right? This is just story time. I know this lesson's a little bit long, right? Rates are comparing the pieces within the ratio, right? So the rate was comparing my croutons and almonds and Lisa's ratio. The scale factor is comparing the croutons from Bobby to the croutons to Lisa, two separate ratios, and then the almonds from Bobby's ratio to Lisa's ratio. So the scale factor is comparing the two separate ratios, whereas the rate is comparing the same ratio. Let's look at this I do. A farmer selling three pounds of apples for $6 each. How much money would he make for selling 12 pounds, right? So my statement's going to say he would make blank dollar dollar bills, y'all, for 12 pounds, right? And so I'm looking for anything about pounds or anything about dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this $6 each for 12 pounds, right? Now, back before you knew about ratios, you'd have to make a T-chart to solve this question, right? And so we're going to show you why ratios are so important. So let's go ahead and do it how we would have used to do it. Now, you don't need to write this down because this is, this is old school here. And so you'd have to label this as pounds, right, and label this as dollars. And you had three pounds and then $6, right? So for every three pounds, you made six. So if you kept going up, you'd have six pounds, twelve dollars, nine pounds, uh, eighteen dollars, and then twelve pounds, twenty-four dollars, right? And you get to circle that, and you have to keep making that T-chart until you were able to find your answer. Now that's all fine and dandy if you only have to do four different steps, right, for your T-chart. But what if he wanted to know how many, um, how much money he would make if he sold three hundred pounds, right? Well, you don't want to keep that T-chart going. So that's where ratios come in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this old school. I'm going to leave the answer there, right? Because we already know the answer. I proved it using a T-chart. And let's look at how we can use ratios to help make this question a little bit quicker. Not necessarily for this one, but for ones when you'd have to do a really long T-chart. Okay. So for every three pounds of apples, I'm making, or the farmer, I'm not a farmer, I'm a car mechanic, is making $6, right, for each three pounds. So my ratio is, I'm going to write it as a fraction, right, for th three pounds to every $6, right? Okay, you could also write $6 to every three pounds, um, but really it, it doesn't matter for what we're trying to do here. I like to label what these numbers are, though, so that way I remember it's not a fraction, it's a ratio, right? So for every three pounds, he's making $6, right? Now, that's going to equal, okay, now I have to keep the same ratio here, okay, which is what a ratio is, right? It's multiplication, which is repeated addition. So they introduce it with the T-chart, and now we get to use the multiplication part, right? Um, and so if I sold 12 pounds, right, I wanted to know, okay, well, how many dollars was that, right? So I need to remember that a, the scale factor is going to compare two different ratios. Now, I already know the pounds of one ratio and the pounds from my other ratio. So I can compare these two quantities or numbers, and I know that 3 times 4 equals 12, which means my scale factor for this ratio, these two ratios, is 4. So if I multiply the pounds by 4, I need to also multiply the dollars by 4, and 6 times 4 is $24, right, which is the same answer I had. So I was able to use ratios and scale factors to set up my equivalent ratios and then solve for my missing piece, right? So that is why our ratios are very important, right? So let's go back to the question I asked before. Okay, well, if I had, if I use the same ratio of three pounds to six dollars, and now though, I, I don't want to know 12 pounds, I want to know 300 pounds, right? I don't want to make that T-chart. But now I see that my scale factor between these two ratios is 100, which means it has to be the same thing for my dollars, too, because they're equivalent ratios, right? And again, kind of like multiplying by the big one for fractions, right? And so 6 times 100 is going to be $600. So if I sold 300 or the farmer sold 300 pounds, he would have made $600. That's a little bit quicker than having to draw a T-chart all the way to 300, okay? 
Now, just for fun, just to review what the definition of a rate is, what is the rate between pounds, right, and dollars? So if I want to know the rate, I'm not comparing the two ratios. I'm comparing the two parts of this ratio. And if I'm going from pounds to dollars, right, my rate would be times two. If I'm going from dollars to pounds, my rate would be times one half, right? And that's the same thing for 12 24ths and for 300 six hundredths, right? Because these are all equivalent ratios. They're going to have the same rate times two pounds to dollars times one half, okay? So you didn't need the rate for this uh, question. You really don't need the scale factor, but it's important to remember what those vocabulary words mean. So if you want to try this one by yourself, go ahead and pause the video, okay? And you can solve it with a uh, ratio. I'm going to go ahead and solve it with a T-chart too and then show the ratio just to kind of show you that you're really doing the same thing, but just a little bit quicker when you understand ratios and scale factors. Um, but go ahead and pause it and push play when you're ready to check. Okay, so my statement said, my question says, how many spark plugs would there be for 56 cylinders? So I'm going to say um, there would be blank spark plugs for 56, oops, blank spark plugs for 56 cylinders, right? So I'm looking for anything about cylinders here or anything about spark plugs. So it says uh, Bobby's Dodge Ram. That's my dream truck. If anybody's an Instructor Beats follower or is in my class and you want to get me a really awesome gift, please buy me a Dodge Ram. I've been wanting one for years. I can't afford it because I'm a poor teacher. Uh, and a, I'm a car mechanic. Um, and so I have 16 spark plugs, right? For its eight cylinder engine, right? That means there's eight cylinders and 16 spark plugs. How many spark plugs would there be if there were 56 cylinders, right? And so, old school way, I'd have to do my spark plugs here, right? Draw my T chart. And then I have to uh, do my cylinders here, right? Um, and so, this is a V8 Hemi. That's what I want just when you buy my car. Um, really any color if you get me a Dodge Ram. Just not the yellow one with the black stripes down the middle like Bumblebee. I, I don't like that one, okay? Just solid colors. Um, and so if I have 16 spark plugs, that means there is eight cylinders, right? And so I need to go all the way to 56. So I'm going to do 16. Um, I'm going to do uh, 24, 32, 40, 48, and then 56, right? And so this is where I need to stop. And now I need to skip count by 16, so it's going to be 32, 48, 64, 80, 96, um, 112, I believe, right? Yep, 112. And so I had to do this T-chart, right, to show the pattern. And if there were 56 cylinders, that would mean there would be 112 spark plugs, right? Which is awesome. Now, that T-chart is a good way to solve things, but that was kind of the beginning step what they taught you in elementary school for ratios. So let's take a look at how we can solve this with ratios. Okay, and so my ratio was six spark plugs, right, to every eight cylinders. And so again, I don't want to write it like this ratio. I want to write it like a fraction ratio. So six, uh, and I like to put a little uh, letter there to help me represent. So six spark plugs to every eight cylinders, right? And so I want to know if I had 56 cylinders, right, how many spark plugs would that be? So again, I'm going to use my scale factor here because I'm comparing, right, these two ratios, okay, and they're, they're equivalent ratios. And so I know my scale factor here was 7 going from cylinders to uh, cylinders. And so if I multiply, if my scale factor is 7 for my cylinders, it's got to be 7, seven for my spark plugs too. And so when I do times 7, that's going to be 112 spark plugs, right? And so I can solve my answer just setting up equivalent ratios and then using my scale factor. And again, if you've done fractions, you know how to do this because this is just like finding equivalent fractions. You multiply the top by 7, you multiply the bottom by 7. I call that the big 1 because you're multiplying by 1. So that is how you would do a ratio using your scale factors to solve this question. Now, bonus question how many trucks are there? Well, this says that Bobby's Dodge Ram, so that's one truck. So for every one truck, there are eight cylinders. So now if I do a different ratio of trucks to cylinders, right? And I can set up my equivalent ratios here, right? And again, if I have 56 cylinders, my scale factor here was seven, which means my scale factor here was seven. Again, scale factor comparing 
the uh, multiplicative relationship between two ratios, right? So this is this ratio is seven times bigger than this ratio. That means there would be seven trucks, right? So you can use ratios in a lot of different ways to answer a lot of different questions. Now, bonus question, what is my rate? So if these are all equivalent um, ratios, they should all have the same rate, right? So my rate going from cylinders to uh, spark plugs looks like it's times two, right? And it looks like it's the same thing for, uh, for sorry, not for these, because this is, this is a completely different ratio. This is truck to um, cylinders. So over here, my ratio should also be the same, or my rate should be the same, and it is. It's times two. Now, if I'm going from spark plugs to cylinders, that would be going the opposite way times one half, right? Which is going to be the same for your equivalent ratios. So equivalent ratios are a lot like equivalent fractions. So hopefully you learn a little bit in the garage with Bobby today, right? You learn about scale factors and rates and really how simple and how easy our lives will be when we understand ratios because we don't have to make T-charts anymore. We can just solve these things with ratios and comparing the multiplicative relationship between them. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out us, our other songs and videos at Instructor Beats Official. Follow us on Instagram at Instructor Beats. And as always, thank you so much for visiting with Bobby in his garage today. Please join us for our next lesson and our ratio playlist. Instructor Beats and Bobby, out.